Hi, happy Oscar time. I'm gonna give you guys some time to join me. I am watching the Oscars like everyone else, but here we are. Hi, welcome, welcome. The Oscars are going to be on in the background because I am actually a huge cinephile and yeah, I'm watching the Oscars while we're doing this. But I pushed it back last week. Hi Shayla. I pushed it back last week because of the Super Bowl because I figured everybody would be all into the Super Bowl and said, what's up KG, my brother? Hi, Miss Nedra or Nidra. Please let me know if I mispronounce it. Um, I'm super, super excited to launch um, this whole series with you guys. Tell me if the Oscars are too loud in the background. I'll turn it down. Um, but I don't think it is. I think we'll be fine. Um, so I wanted to launch this. Hey, Tower Tucson. You know what? We need to connect. I think we've been at like three or four of the same events and I just haven't linked up with you guys. So we have to make that happen very soon. Um, so a little bit about this series before we jumped into it. Uh, my philosophy on wine is I could tell you exactly what to drink all the time. I I'll take a picture of it, I'll tell you it, but it's really important to me that I help people, whether they need it or not, who knows. Um, I really, really enjoy helping people develop their understanding of wine language, their understanding of how these grapes are and the different characteristics they present so that they can look at a wine list and be able to ask the right questions to the psalm to find out what they want to know or that they're confident enough going into their wine shop. So leading up to this, I told you guys, go into your wine shop, say, hey, I'm going to a tasting and I want a classic representation of the Sauvignon Blanc grape from the Loire Valley because I think it's one of the best places in the world to grow Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and so we're not gonna be all drinking the same thing, but I think that we're gonna have a great spirited discussion anyway. So let's talk about what I'm drinking. So I am drinking the 2018 Domaine Vacheron, Katie, uh, the French wine tutor. If I'm not saying this right, you will tell me. But this is Domaine Vacheron. Uh, this is Sancerre, this is 100%. Sauvignon Blanc and it's from the Loire Valley. The Loire Valley is legendary for growing amazing, amazing, amazing Sauvignon Blanc. It is a grape that I love. Um, it's a grape that I think is very friendly. It's a very good introduction into wine and it presents itself very differently depending on where in the world you drink it from. Um, it's known as a very green grape that gives off and we'll talk a little bit, this is a good segue actually into understanding when you hear people talk wine and I'm one of the people that does it, we automatically switch to another vernacular, right? So you'll hear us say things like, primary flavors and secondary and tertiary and and that really doesn't translate all the time just primary flavors are immediately what you smell and i want everyone to get confident saying whatever that is if it smells like i don't know church wine to you or this punch that you had one time or it smells like shoe polish or whatever, you would be surprised how accurate you probably are. And maybe that's just not the word that the wine space uses to describe it, but get confident saying what you say. I wrote an article a little while ago called No One Knows. No one knows, like all of our senses, our smells, our tastes, it's developed over time. So if you say this smells like my grandma's attic that's full of books. That's what it smells like to you. Now to translate that into wine speak, the tasting note would probably be this smells like wet cardboard, which absolutely is a distinct note in wine. So get comfortable saying exactly what you smell. And don't be intimidated if you are tasting with people or around people that seem to know a lot more than you. Tasting and enjoying and learning wine is something that comes over time or you can geek out and deep dive into studies but you don't walk in being an expert. My boo, hey PB and J, hi Larissa. For me, I mean, my tasting group is led by a master som and almost everybody in the group is either preparing for their uh, WSET diploma, preparing for the advanced uh, exam in the court of master sommeliers or they're preparing to be MSs themselves. I, that is a very, 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 
great group of palettes and sometimes, I don't know, but I'm learning. I'm taking notes of it. Don't be intimidated. You will get it. You will pick up on it. You will ask questions. It's fine. All right, so let's start with this great Sauvignon Blanc. Again, for everyone that joined late, I am drinking uh, Domaine Vacheron. If you know wine well, you know this is one of the greatest producers uh, in the Loire Valley, and this is their 2018 expression. I mean, I'm sorry, 2018 vintage. Okay, so white wines, I use a, a Universal Zalto most times. Uh, if I have friends over, I do not have Universal Zaltos for all of them. I drink out of a Universal Zalto, but I use Riedel glasses. I have uh, different white wine glasses, but this, I think universal glasses are great. Um, so here's the whole process of how people taste wine, right? You look at it first. What color is this, right? It's yellow. Now, if you're getting geeky, uh, it might be pale straw, it may be golden, it may be day bright, you'll hear all of these things. The wine's yellow, and if you're not studying for an exam, you don't really care. It's a white wine, right? You know that it looks like a white wine. It is a white wine. This for me would be, uh, it's getting into straw. It's a little bit golden. Um, this is uh, organic fruit. This is uh, indigenous yeast. Um, doesn't really spend time in an oak uh, that much. Actually, this isn't an oak at all. Um, there's a lot of different vitification methods. A lot of people are trying cement and all that stuff. So I would just call this straw if you needed to. Pale straw to be specific. So if you have Sauvignon Blanc right now. Okay, Larissa is drinking 2018. Oh, yes! Now that is a bottle, sis. I love, love, love. There are so many great producers of this wine and you can get... The one that I'm drinking is a little pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but it's because it's a very old, very well-known producer. You can get a great bottle of Sauvignon Blanc from France, from New Zealand, which is another great place to drink it from, or from Napa, really for under $20, $25, easily. Great bottle, not, you know. If you wanna splurge and go way up, you don't really need to, unless you're an enthusiast and this is a grape that you know. So the primary flavors for me, Sauvignon Blanc is notoriously known as a green, and you hear that. People will say, oh, the wine smells green. Laura, who is a master sum uh, and owner of Cork Buzz, is very much a person that likes to describe wine by color. So Sauvignon Blanc is notoriously a green grape. It smells very herbaceous most times. Herbaceous? Anything green. You know the difference between smelling a glass of apple juice or citrus infused water versus water that's been infused with cucumber, right? So whether you know wine or not, you know that fruit infused water doesn't smell like water that's been infused with cucumber. So that's where you can start separating out the primary flavors, are they green? Are they yellow and zippy and citrusy? So you can use words like color to kind of get you into a space of like, all right, is it apple juice or is it green juice? Period. So Sauvignon Blanc notoriously has got these green notes. If you are cooking this week and you're using bell pepper, stop, take a second, cut the bell pepper open and just give a smell. Um, it's a smell that you'll, you'll know. Nobody really goes around sniffing bell peppers or jalapenos or, um, you know, the entire herb section of the grocery store. But if you start getting yourself familiar with smelling these things, that happens. And so the primary flavors are, they tend to be either green or citrusy. Um, this particular one, it's very exotic with its fruits. The warmer the climate, you start to get more tropical fruits. You get pineapple, uh, not in this one. This one is very straightforward. I'm getting grapefruit, lime. This is very, very uh, mineral driven. So I'm getting some slate, some wet stones. And no, you don't walk around sniffing wet stones. But if you've ever spent time at a lake or uh, gone hiking and went by a stream or drank really, really good mineral water, I'm obviously in New York um, and I spent some time in the summer up in Saratoga Springs where there's fresh like spring water straight out of the earth and it's amazing. And that's a great example of minerality. So that's what you get from Sauvignon Blanc. It's not gonna be the super fruity. It can lean that way. It can get a little tropical. And that all depends on the temperature, right? The warmer the climate, the more time the grape has to ripen. So you'll get more of that juicy, 
fruity characteristic from the grape, depending on climate. The Loire Valley really isn't that hot. So you have a lot more mineral driven, green and citrus driven grapes. I mean, flavors, sorry. Uh, I've had Sauvignon Blancs that smell like cat pee. I know, why does anyone ever want to drink a wine that smells like cat pee or fox pee? You'd still enjoy it, because what it smells like doesn't necessarily mean what it tastes like. I never tasted cat pee, so I can't tell you what that smell, what that tastes like, but I can tell you what it smells like. All right, so let's get into this. Let's take a sip of whatever you're drinking. Oh, another, let me dispel another myth. Have you ever been to a tasting and seen somebody do this? All of that, that's stupid. And it's really not necessary. Thank you. you do want, when you're tasting wine, you want to pass the wine over all the points of your mouth because different, uh, our tongue, a little biology lesson. Our tongue has sensory uh, nodes all over that pick up different things from different places. So you want to pass the wine over your tongue to make sure that you pick up all the flavors. You don't want to gurgle wine. It's weird. I don't know why anyone does it. It's silly to me. So when you taste wine, particularly white wines, I, I don't like misinformation and I've seen it. So I'm going to clarify this for you. Dry, when you describe a wine as dry, which Sauvignon Blanc tends to be from New Zealand, which I've mentioned is a little bit warmer, you can get a little bit more residual sugar, but by and large, it's a dry wine. Dry sugar, that's what it talks about. I've seen people say dry wines dry your mouth. That's not true. Tannins dry your mouth, not the dryness of the wine, right? In white wines, what you what you really want to look for is, is this a high acid grape or a low acid grape, right? So Sauvignon Blanc is, is kind of interesting. Oh, sorry, I almost dropped my phone, oops. So, I am, oh, my sister's here, okay. So Sauvignon Blanc is actually a high acid wine. And I think that the more that you get into tasting wines and enjoying them, you tend to become an acid head. If you follow shitty wine memes, like she had a meme the other day that was like Gordon Ramsay with like a bottle of lime juice and a bottle of lemon juice, squeezing it into Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePants mouth. No, Patrick's mouth. And it was like Chablis. Chablis is also a very, very, very high acid wine and it's delicious. When you take a sip of the wine and you pass it over your tongue, when you swallow, what you want to look for to determine acid is how quickly your mouth starts to salivate. That's what acid does. It's like drinking lemonade. Like lemonade's super refreshing on a hot day, but you instantly get more thirsty the more of it you drink. That's what acid does to your mouth, right? It'll create saliva and it'll make your mouth get stimulated, but you still want more and more and more. So that's the balance of it. It's really acid creates saliva. So if you take a sip of this. Almost instantly, like before I even swallow, the saliva is building up. This is a high acid wine. All wine has some tannin. White wines are not known for tannin. So please don't let anybody tell you to buy joy or drink a, tan a tannic white wine. It's just not a thing. White wines are either high acid or low acid green or yellow, fruity or not fruity, residual sugar or no residual sugar. That's kind of the spectrum of how we describe this. So this wine to me, it's so refreshing. It's acidic, it's green, but there's still a good amount of fruity notes. It's minerally. So this is actually a wine that you could have with a salad or with green vegetables. But if you put a vinaigrette on your salad and you have this, it's gonna ruin it. It's gonna be too much acid. It's gonna make the greens, it's gonna bring out actually more of the bitterness in the greens. I wouldn't do this. If you're putting a, a, a vinaigrette on your salad, mm, I wouldn't go for this. I think it would be acid overload. I mean, I might enjoy it because I really like acid, but it might be a little bit overwhelming for your palate. So I'm gonna pause for a minute here and ask if anybody has any questions about Sauvignon Blanc. Again, this is our first of the 18 noble grapes. There are 
hundreds and hundreds of grape varietals from all over the world. But there are 18 noble grapes that are pretty much like the, the OGs. It is the original grapes, the parent grapes of many grapes. Well, some of them are cousins, so that's, I shouldn't say it's the, all the parents. Um, but it's kind of the, the OG. It's like the commission from whence the rest of them came. But not really if you're in Italy, Spain, or Portugal. Just gonna put that out there. Um, what is my favorite? My favorite wine in general, my favorite white wine, or my favorite place in the world to drink Sauvignon Blanc from? You're gonna have to clarify that for me. Hmm. This is really good. Steven, clarify your question for me. What were you asking? My favorite wine in general? I'll, I'll wait for you to type, but my favorite place to drink Sauvignon Blanc from is uh, actually Marlboro, New Zealand. Those wines are amazing. My favorite place in the world to drink wine from is Spain, but it would not be Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, uh, what is my favorite white wine? My favorite white wine to drink is Riesling. I love Riesling from Alsace, France. And I can assure you that once we start getting into it, once we get to Riesling, I will promise you 1000% is going to be a very dry, very high acid um, uh, Riesling from Alsace. Un, 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 no mistakes. Uh, what's my favorite place to drink um, Sauvignon Blanc from? Marlboro, New Zealand. Uh, I absolutely love those wines. It's normally blended with another grape called Semillon which actually gives the wine a lot more body. And we've talked about body before. The best way to categorize body is to think of milk, right? Skim milk is super watery, kind of thin. And when you get up to whole milk, there's a little bit of a velvety texture to the mouth that it gives it. So I love um, Sauvignon Blanc that is blended with Semillon. Um, but I think the most classic expressions of the grape itself undeniably the Loire Valley in France. We love uh, wines from Mont Louis. Absolutely, I mean, go all over the Loire Valley. There are great wines there. If you wanted to start, you wanted to get a good bottle of Sauvignon Blanc at multiple, multiple price points, absolutely start in the Loire Valley. Also, this is how we're gonna do this, right? I'm just going to tell you that this is the grape that we're doing. I want you to confidently walk into your wine shop and say, look, I'm going to a tasting and we're focusing on classic, classic expressions of this grape. Where would you recommend? If your wine shop cannot answer that question for you, it's very simple. Walk out and go somewhere else because that should be a very, very easy question. Also, do not be afraid to say your price point because if you don't say that, it's a retail business. They're going to try to sell you Maybe a step up. Maybe there is a $20 bottle in there, but if they can sell you the $35 bottle, that's what they're gonna do. So be honest, say your budget, and get you a good bottle of wine that you will absolutely enjoy. Yes, absolutely walk out and go somewhere else and never go there again, because if the person in the shop can't guide you on that, that's not the place you wanna go to explore your wines. Um, Ugh, what else can I say about this? This also grows. There's great Sauvignon Blanc in uh, Napa. Honestly, I think that Honing makes one of my favorites. Um, it's That's a, a great value wine, uh, but it's so good. Literally, it's, it's on the wine list at Per Se, which is a three Michelin star restaurant. And it's not a uh, super expensive wine at all. Honing, Larissa, help me out. Honing might be 20, 25 bucks a bottle if you go to the right place. Um, but the north coast of California is a little bit warmer, so you also get, like, instead of it being as green, you're going to get more notes of maybe white peach and lemongrass and all those good things. But the best way to develop your nose about what you smell and all that fun stuff, when you're in the grocery store, smell things, please. Parsley doesn't smell like dill. Dill doesn't smell like rosemary. Rosemary doesn't smell like thyme. So the more you get into just smelling these things, these are things you cook with 
every single day. If I put a glass of apple juice in front of you and a cup of kale juice in front of you and blindfolded you, you would be able to very clearly, even if you couldn't identify that one was apple juice and one was kale versus spinach or whatever, you can absolutely pick up that one smells fruity and sweet and the other one smells, well, green. It's the same thing with wine. And as you go into spaces and you go to taste things, if you go to taste things, damn it, their sole purpose there is to talk about the wine. I have poured wines at tastings before. I will go on and on about the wine, as many questions as you have. So don't be afraid of that. Approximately $25. Yeah, I think it per se, which is a three Michelin star restaurant, I think it was $60 for the bottle, which is an expected markup in a restaurant. But isn't honing a great, honing, is it hon, honing? Sorry, sometimes I have a speech impediment pronouncing things, but it's it's honing. I'm almost sure it is. I'll post it. Tomorrow I'll post a blog post recapping all that we talked about tonight and I'll put that up there because I think that's a great representation of it um, from the North, from California. Uh, I will put the Domaine Vacheron up there because I think this is a great expression of it uh, from the Loire Valley. Now this is a legendary producer so this bottle is a little bit pricey. Uh, it's close to, uh, I want to say like $40. If you're in New York or you want to go online, we have this at Verve Wine. Um, but I think that if you wanted to take a good bottle that somebody invited you to dinner, I think this is a good wine to take. I think it's a crowd pleaser. Uh, I love tastings. That's where I can explore without the disappointment. Uh, exactly. And it's also where you can, if you ask the right questions at tastings, like it's almost better to ask questions about the stuff you don't like, right? Because if if you get this wine, right? Let's say you go out and you try Sauvignon Blanc, and and you taste it, and I'm like, ugh, this is a little bit too green for me. Like it's, I feel like I'm drinking. I don't know. Somebody put. I went to to Juice Generation and got me a kale smoothie, and somebody threw some alcohol in it then maybe you don't want to drink. It's not that you want to stop drinking Sauvignon Blanc, but the next time you go into your wine shop, you're able to say, listen, I know that Sauvignon Blanc can be a little bit green. I like it a little more tropical. Again, the person in the wine shop should be able to know, like, fine, what they're saying to me is they like it from a warmer climate. They like more of the fruit notes in it. And that should lead you to another place, which is really, really good. I joined a wine club. Yeah, it's it's really, really good. I know that sometimes, depending on life and time and all of that stuff, it's hard to get to a tasting group. Sometimes it's hard to find one. Um, and so, you know, I think that this is a good way for us to taste together. How much should you eat before a tasting? I'm a bit of a lightweight. Well, I think that what the strategy there should be is when I go to tastings, I spit out my first round of the wines that I want to take. I spit it out. I taste it. I'll do this. You only need to do that aeration thing for red wine. But I'll taste. I'll swish it around. And I'll spit it out. If I don't like it, I don't need to drink any more of it. And I'll dump it out in the dump bucket. And if I like it, I will actually notate that. Because once I get around to... Sorry, sorry. My phone is down to 10%. I'm back. So I'll spit out the first round. I, I wrote an article about how I navigate tasting. So when I go to a large tasting, I look at all the wines that are there. I note what I want to try. I make a first round pass. I taste everything and I spit everything out. Also, for every glass of wine I drink, I drink at least four ounces of water. Um, after I go through my first round and I note the stuff that I really liked, I go back and really, based on price point, I go back and have more of it, right? Like I, I went to a, uh, a grand tasting a, a couple of, I feel like that was November maybe, and they had like crazy bottles of Dom Perignon and Cristal, bottles that are three, four, five hundred dollars. That I, I'm not balling like that, not, not at all. But I'm gonna go back and drink a ton of that because A, that's something to love, and B, it's not something that I might buy. So I think that you should eat a normal amount of food, but you should pace yourself. You are drinking a lot of wine, a lot of the drunkenness comes from you're drinking too fast and you're not hydrating. So if you're at a big tasting, you wanna spit the wine out and you wanna make sure every time you do this with a glass, you have a little thing of water next to you and you drink some of that too. That's a great way to stay hydrated. Um, 
Keith says, depending on how many wines you're tasting, it's good to have a base before going to a tasting, but a full meal is unnecessary. Also, they'll have bread, crackers, and cheese. Absolutely, they definitely will. You'll have little noshes. There's always crackers. It's a good palate reset too. But I just really find like if it's a very, very big tasting, you know, all these tastings with two, 300 wines, it, you're not drinking two and 300 wines. You're not even drinking 100 wines. Let's be very honest with you. Find the wines that you want to try, and if you don't know any, pick a region. Look, I don't know much about Italian wines, but every time I go to an Italian restaurant, I like the wine. So maybe you start by exploring Italy, but your first pass, those dump buckets and spit buckets, I know it seems super gross. When I first got into wine, I'm like, okay, mm clutch pearls what I'm not about to do is be bending over and spitting in the bucket with everyone else's spit but it's important that you do that um, to keep yourself from getting way out of control and um, yeah and I, I've seen tastings where people are trashed and it's sort of super embarrassing um, yeah so I think you can get a great bottle of Sancerre without spending any more than $25. Um, I think that the sweet spot for really good ones made by good producers and made in very classic styles that really showcase the grape you're probably gonna be in the 20 to $25 um, place. I think that if you're going to get into tasting wine and really like kind of approaching it from the point of an enthusiast or a hobbyist I would make the investment and get a Coravin. I mean, I love this bottle, uh, but I went to brunch today and, and had quite a bit of things to drink. So I don't want to open the whole bottle. So I Coravin myself a glass. My bottle is, is fine. There's a little needle hole at the top and that's it. So if you're gonna dive into wine, I think a Coravin is a good investment. Um, you can either treat yourself to it for Valentine's Day or hint, hint, this is what I want for Valentine's Day or anything about that. Larissa, who is a, like, she is my guru of wine education. I think you should check out her videos. They're very approachable. They make wine super simple. And I think that if you're going to take wine above just, ah, I like it when it's around. I sort of want to get into it. Her videos are a great place to start. Also, read, read, read. If you follow me earlier this week at Verve, we had Aldo Sam who just wrote a great book called Wine Simple. I have it, it's on my shelf. Um, I think that it's a great book to start with, uh, Wine Folly. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I really can't get to the book without potentially having a bunch of books topple on me. Um, but Wine Folly, Wine Simple, and Andre Max 99 bottles are really good, approachable, like, look, this is where I had this wine. It tasted like this. I enjoyed it. That's really it. Wine, no matter how much it is, I've had crazy bottles of wine where I'm like, meh, everyone's going nuts over it. Oh my God, this bottle is $700. Now I've had bottles like that that are freaking amazing. Don't get me wrong. But the truth is, your palate isn't my palate. There are things, look, I've had eggplant made for me by everyone. I just don't like it. It's not a vegetable that's for me. There will be wines that just aren't for you. That's why we're going through all 18 of the OG grapes. That was cute. So that we can start finding a place where you're comfortable. We will get to Moscato. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if what you like is a sweeter style of wine, there's Port, there's Madeira, there's very, very sweet styles of Riesling, there's Chardonnays with a little bit of residual sugar. Like, my goal is not to say, Ugh, what you're drinking is garbage. Now, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I say that, because there are wines that I do think personally are just garbage, don't drink it anymore. But, the goal of this is to get you more comfortable using the language, asking the questions, to find you a bottle of wine that works for you, for your palate, for your budget, and for your enjoyment. If you're not enjoying the bottle of wine, it doesn't matter. I thank you all for joining this with me. This is our first installation of the journey through the 18 noble grapes. We had Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley today. I very much enjoyed spending this time with you guys. I will post tomorrow a summary of the Domaine Vacheron that I had, other places that you can try Sauvignon Blanc from, and we'll go together. Wednesday I will post, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, I'll post the next grape we're going to 
tattoo that's very different from this one. This one's green. The next time we meet, which will be not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, we're going to Spain and we're having Alvarino. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Go and watch the Oscars now. That's what I'm about to do. Cheers, guys!